where two or more are gathered in my name, there I will be in the midst of them. And with that being said, we begin our service in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I want to extend a warm, stavonger welcome to everyone that's here this morning. Yeah, some ways, I guess I'm happy to see this many. You know, with road conditions and weather and everything that it is, as far as weather, I don't know what to say, you know. This is Iowa, it's April, here we go. You know, that's just all that we can say about it. Lived here all my life and it's, it's just, you never know. If any of you are guests this morning or guests or, or visitors, certainly want to encourage you to sign our guest book. Uh, Pastor Earl, Earl and Joan, you make sure you sign the guest book. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. But anyway, it's good to see you again this morning. Uh, if I may, I would like to go to the uh, right-hand side of the bulletin, if we could, please, for our announcements. Uh, I've been asked to make a couple uh, announcements that aren't in print. Number one is the mission board is going to meet immediately following service this morning back in the library. And then I've also been told that, uh, Pam, you need people to sign up to help serve coffee and refreshments following services, right? So the need is there. Dan, how are we doing? Do we still need someone for Sunday school and helpers? Uh, or B a BBS, rather, I'm sorry. So if anyone's interested in teaching BBS or helping out some way, please see Dan, Don, or myself. You know, so anyway. As far as the list of prayer concerns, uh, don't pass anybody up. They're still there for a reason that's on there. Uh, I personally stopped in last Wednesday, visited Jason, who was recovering from surgery, you know, with his knee and everything. And uh, he was in good a spirits as you could have it. He didn't want to get up and go for a walk with me or anything like that. But he's, he's in good shape, and he'll be fine, and he's home recovering from knee surgery. Are there any additions or corrections that need to be made with the, on, for announcements or anything? I say... Corrections, because we are human. We do make mistakes. If not, let's uh, take a moment for silent prayer and uh, reflection, if we could, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you now, Lord, for this another Lord's Day. And as we gather here, Lord, it is dry and it is warm inside. And for that, we say thank you, Lord. But Lord, we just ask now, Lord, that... Uh, I ask that you be with Pastor Tom as he brings the message this morning. Use him in a special way, Lord. But Lord, I pray for the, for the spirit of conviction and the spirit of forgiveness to move among us, Lord. We ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. I ask you to arise as we sing our first hymn, number 545, Because He Lives.
with me? Lord, thank you for today that we can come here to worship you and that we live in a country that we can do so. I ask that you uh, lift up those who are sick and uh, hurting, that you just comfort them. I also pray that you be with Pastor Tom as he brings us the message from the Psalms, that you could just touch our hearts with it. I also like to pray for anybody that's having trouble or struggling with their faith, that you might help bring them to the Christ, Lord, and show them that only salvation can come through you. Please forgive me of my sins. In your name I pray. Amen. You recall just a short moment ago I asked if there was any additions or corrections, and I said we make mistakes because we're human. I forgot to have one individual come up here with an announcement. Dan? Good morning. Got a uh, praise. Uh, last night, a little after nine, uh, Pastor Eric Swenson called and they accepted the call. So uh, uh, he's, uh, they're planning on probably coming the, uh, in July or first part of August. So thank you to everyone for their prayers. Thank you, Pastor, for dropping his name to the call committee. And uh, so anyway, a very, very good praise. And uh, they're excited to come. And he said to pray for him too because he's letting his congregation know this morning. So, all right. And Pastor Tom, we're not firing you yet, so. <laughs> Thank you. I'd just like to say a special thank you to the members of the call committee. That is a huge job. It is a huge job. I've been on a call committee, and it's, it is a task, let me tell you. If you haven't been on, it's, there's a number of you that have been on, so you understand what I'm talking about. But Anyway, at this time, let's sing their second hymn. Easter morrow, still our sorrow, number 106. <laughs>
scripture readings today are in 1 John and the John. Uh, today is April 28, 2009, or 2019, and our service originates from Stronger Free Lutheran Church in Garden City, Iowa. I ask if you would please arise for the reading of the word. Our first lesson this morning is from 1 John chapter 5, beginning at verse 4 through 12. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and by blood. Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood, and the Spirit is the witness because the Spirit is the truth. And there are three witnesses, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For it is the testimony of God that he is born witness to his Son. He who believes in the Son of God has a testimony in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne to his Son. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and his life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life, and he who has not the Son of God has not life. Our second reading this morning comes from the book of John, chapter 19, beginning at, or excuse me, the, chapter 20, verse 19. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors began being shut where the disciples were for the fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And, Jesus, and the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when they had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called a twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in the hands in the print of the nails, and put, place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then, saw, then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Pull out your hand, put out your hand, and place it in my side. And do not be faithless, but believing. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, You have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are now written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord.
like to ask the ushers to come forward at this time and receive the offering. Thank you, Roseanne. Our ministry in music this morning comes with Kelly Elwood. Find in me thine all and all. 
Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find thy power and thy stand in him complete Jesus died my soul to save my lips shall still repeat that Jesus gave it all all to him I owe sin Lots of good news this morning. My firing is on the way. <laughs> Brother Earl, we're glad you're here. Stand up and give us a brief report of what God's doing with you since you have resigned being pastor here at Stavanger. Thank you. Uh, it's good to be here. Uh, whirlwind of activity. Uh, been bring great news from uh, Brazil and from Mexico. We have hardworking missionaries on the field. Um, you know, a lot of stories start out with, well, Pastor, which part, part of that story do you want to hear? Work is just, it's tougher on the mission field. And so pray for our missionaries. Um, great, my great great name is Shurkov, which you maybe, some of you maybe know, talking about Shurkov down in uh, Brazil, the Abels, and then we were with uh, some of our friends in um, Mexico for Palm Sunday through Easter Sunday. I uh, ask also for your prayers. This week we leave Wednesday for India. So there is a, a cyclone, which is a hurricane, I guess, in that hemisphere. <laughs> but uh, that is going to be gone by the time we get there. It should just be rainy. So, uh, but it's 108. It should be like 108 next weekend in Chennai, India. And a little concerned about that. <laughs> 108 in rain. So, um, but we'll be there for a week, and then in Uganda, uh, in the same area as Marshall and Terra, and then heading to Switzerland before coming home on uh, Memorial Day weekend. So, I appreciate the prayers, and um, it's just, it is such a blessing to see our missionaries on the field. And uh, they labor and labor and labor, but they know they can't do it in their strength either. Uh, they need our prayers and our support. So. We're encouraged to be there to encourage our missionaries, and uh, we all need prayer. So, and we've been praying for you guys too, <laughs> and the Lord's answering prayer here too. And we're looking forward to great things in the future and as God continues to work in all of our lives. 
So I want your wife and all of your family there to stand by you. <laughs> and all of us are going to zero in on you, and I'm going to lead us in a special prayer for you. think one girl's missing. Uh, she's in Bible college. Heavenly Father, thank you for energizing uh, Earl to be able to get on those airplanes and fly all around the world where your children are laying down their lives in the name of Jesus Christ to take the gospel to the unreached peoples of the earth. Thank you for all of the outreach wherever it is that they are going to take Jesus. Lift your name high over them, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit anoint every effort they make. Please go before them. Make the crooked places straight. Please come behind and be their rear guard. Thank you for all that you did with them as a family here among this family at Stavanger and in Iowa. Thank you for their recommendation that is bringing Brother Eric uh, Swenson to come with his family to lead this fellowship shortly. And we pray blessing on them, blessing on Brother Swenson, and pray that wherever your gospel goes forth this day across the world, here in this place and around the world, it will bear much fruit that remains to the coming of the Lord. And I pray this congregation will never cease to pray for Brother Earl and his family. Thank you for what a beautiful testimony they are, the wonderful, sweet fragrance they have left here among these people, and the work they have done in your name. Let it just multiply, even exponentially, because we pray for Jesus' sake and in his name. Amen and amen. Thank you, brother. <coughs> Psalm 23 is our text for today. Uh, you have a Bible. I hope you will mark yours like I've marked mine. Put by Psalm 22. That was last Sunday's message. The shepherd's cross. So you draw a cross by Psalm 22 in your Bible. Because Psalm 22 talks all about the suffering of Jesus and the shedding of his blood to wash away the sin of all the world who repents and puts their confidence in him alone. Today, I want you to draw a crook, a shepherd's crook, by Psalm 23. And next Sunday, you can draw a crown because I'll be preaching about the shepherd's crown. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, your everlasting doors, and the king who is coming will come in. The cross, the crook, and the crown. And today is the shepherd's crook. Those little sketches that you make in your Bible, hopefully you're not afraid to mark your Bible, helps you to put little memory marks in your head so that the Holy Spirit has more to work with. If you don't have any more gray matter than I do, you need all the help you can get. And so all of the little reminders that you can give yourself out of the Word, in the Word, along with the Word, so that the Word, the living Word, Jesus Christ, by the power of His Holy Spirit, takes His truth and stirs it in you so that you and I begin to think more like Him, have attitudes that mimic and mirror His, and our actions are a living demonstration Wherever we go, the church of Jesus Christ is to go. And wherever we go, whatever we do, whatever our lot in life, whatever our position in life, wherever we go in life, we ought to be the sweet fragrance of having Jesus Christ as our shepherd. He is our Lord, our King, 
and we want the world to be impacted by him through his church, by the power of his spirit, because we are the people of God. So Psalm 23, <clears throat> if you're an old King James person, you can quote it with me. <clears throat> the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runs over. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? Forever. Now and forever, Jesus Christ, the shepherd of the sheep. On Wednesday night, some time ago, as I began at the front end, of our Easter journey. I gave you a sheet of paper that gave you the nine expressions of Jehovah God. And every one of those expressions can be found here in Psalm 23. The Lord, that word Lord is all capitalized because it is the word Yahweh. Jehovah. The Lord is my shepherd. That word is Ro-E. The Lord is my shepherd. How many of you ever raised any sheep? Got three or four hands here. God bless you. <laughs> what a test that must have been. Well, I've never had a sheep. I've never raised any sheep. But I've been a pastor of a church since I was 16 years old. So I know a lot about human sheep. They're pretty messy. They're pretty dumb. In the sense of ignorant. <laughs> and they're a lot of fun. The Lord is my shepherd. I'm sure he chose that for a very special reason. And he wants, if he's not, to be your personal shepherd every day of your life. He wants to counsel you, talk with you, walk with you. He wants you to so understand Psalm 23 that you embody that in your very being. You know it in your mind. You stow it in your heart. You show it in your life. You sow it in the world. And everywhere you go, when people see you, listen to you, watch you, deal with you, have any business dealings with you, they say, ah, there's something about him, her, that's different. Oh, you must be one of those. You are a sheep, a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. I shall not want. The word lack or want shows us that he is Jehovah Jireh, the one who supplies our every need. Every one of us in this room this morning is a living demonstration of his wonderful provision as Jehovah Jireh, because the fact that you could get up this morning and take a breath, 
that you could put your clothes on and get out of bed, that you could take steps and walk. It's nothing but the grace of God demonstrated to you and me that he is the shepherd and graciously he's endowed us and he has met our need for air and supply. And he leads us beside the still waters. He takes us out and makes us lie down in green pastures. That also is provision. I shall not want because as a sheep I need grazing. And he has given us his written word to feed us on a daily basis. And if you ate this morning breakfast, God's provision has been for you on your table. And he wants to feed his sheep. And he wants to not only take us and cause us to lie down in green pastures, a good shepherd would always dig a trench and cause some clear water to run out of a rough running stream so that it would get quiet because the sheep like still waters. But sheep are so dumb, they'll even drink muddy water that other sheep have trampled in. <laughs> and it messes up their digestive system. But a good shepherd tries to lead the people to drink clear, healthy water and eat good grass. And oft times the sheep would never have to have a drink because they were led early to the pasture where they would eat on the grass that was covered with dew. And the dew refreshed them and gave them wonderful, re clear, refreshing water from the Lord. And it says that he renews, restores our life our strength. The word restore is a healing picture that he is Jehovah Rapha, the great healer. Oft times over these 61 years, Maria and I have been married when she has felt nauseous or sick, having something feeling terrible about in her physical being. She said, oh, Tom, would you just please pray for me? How many times I've laid hands on her and I pray like all of us should to God through Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit in line with the Holy Scripture. But also he loves it when you know his names. And I've said also, Heavenly Father, I know that you are Jehovah Rapha, the great healer. Would you please restore Marie? And because I prayed for her in his healing name, I've been amazed at how many times, whatever the nausea was, whatever the health physiological problem was, it went away. Hopefully you men know how to do that for your wives and for your children. You ought to be the man of God that your wife and your children look to when there is a need at your house. And when they come to you with a need, you ought to be able to answer that need out of the scripture because you're a sheep and you follow the master shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, and help to restore the life of your family. He restores my soul. That's my mind, my emotions, and my will. The Lord wants to take his word to clarify your mind, clarify your mind so that you keep your mind clear. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. What a wonderful change in your life will be wrought if you fill your mind with scripture. If you run that scripture through your emotions and personalize it so that you know how you're supposed to feel. And then you visualize it with your will and you say, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is the path I'm supposed to take. We, none of us as sheep of the Lord Jesus Christ ought to spend one day more in ignorance of the things of God. He gave us a book. He gave us a book of 66 books and he wants us, everyone, to know the scripture to live the scripture, 
to feed on the scripture and to keep our inner health healthy because we feast daily on his word. He renews, restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. That word righteousness means to be right with God. The only way you can be right with God is by the cleansing blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the only way you can live right before your family is by walking with God through Jesus Christ. He gives you his righteousness. He is Jehovah Sid Canoe, that Jehovah word. He is the Lord, our righteousness, and he bestows his righteousness on you. You have none of your own. But you stand in his righteousness because you're in Jesus Christ. And the miracle of the gospel is, as we preached last Sunday, the shepherd's cross out of Psalm 22 is that the blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, cleans you so clean that you look as clean in the eyes of God as Jesus Christ himself. Tragedy is you don't look like that to your wife. Or to your husband, or to your son, or to your daughter, or to your neighbor. Because so much of us is so unlike him. But the more we walk with the shepherd and are shepherded by the shepherd himself, by the power of his spirit, the more we ought to look like him, act like him, be like him, so that everything about us is a testimony and a reflection of him. So we treat people righteously. We pay our bills. We pay our income tax. We respect our neighbor. We make sure if our dog messes in the neighbor's yard, we clean it up. We make friends for Jesus everywhere we go because he is our shepherd and he has made us Clean, righteous, upright before God, and right acting toward each other. And then he says, he leads us in that path of righteousness for his namesake. Do you know that's the name Yahweh? Y-H-W-H is the Hebrew four-letter word. And everywhere we go, we bear that covenant name for God made possible for us through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. And wherever you go, you bear his name. <laughs> when my children used to go to school, many times they never understood what old dad was talking about, but I'd tell them, be a missionary, not a mission field. I wanted them to be sharing something, not just receiving stuff from the world, but they reflecting my family, reflecting our truth. And I taught our children, you don't have to walk with God because you're a preacher's kid. You have to walk with God because as a Christian, you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord just like I do. And the name of Jesus Christ is on your hands and your reputation, your reputation is bearing the reputation of Jesus Christ. And you don't have to bear that because you're a preacher's kid. You have to bear that because you have confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord, and you owe him the same obedience, the same respect, the same testimony, and wherever you go, you're supposed to reflect him just like I am supposed to reflect him because I am a preacher of the gospel. His namesake, and yea, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. For Christians, death is like a shadow. The great preacher who wrote one of the great hymns of Christmas, Wife Died, 
and his children were in the car and his little daughter was seated next to him coming home from the burial site. And as they rode along on the highway, a huge truck passed and the shadow of that truck cast itself across their car. And he looked over at his little daughter and he said, Honey, had you rather be run over by a truck or by the shadow of a truck? And she said, Of course, Daddy. I'd a lot rather be run over by the shadow of a truck. Well, that's what's happened to Mommy, he said. She is now going through the valley of the shadow of death. But she needs fear no evil because the one who called her from us has taken her through the valley of the shadow of death. And now mommy is forever in his presence because he was her shepherd as he wants to be yours and mine. We don't have to be afraid of shadows, of darkness that's all around us everywhere in our country, culture. The darkest valley should hold no fear for us if we are sheep of the shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, and are living our life by the power of his spirit through him. We fear no danger. He's not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. He anoints our head with oil. That is Jehovah Shammah. It's the word for the Holy Spirit, the anointing in the Old Testament. They anointed the kings who reigned. They anointed the priests who served the people. They anointed the prophets who preached to the people. And Jesus is all of those through all of the scripture. He's prophet and he's priest and he's king. And he did everything he did by the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And that same spirit by which Jesus lived his life, carried out his ministry as the prophet and the priest and the king, as the sacrifice in Psalm 22, and as the shepherd in Psalm 23, and as the coming king in Psalm 24, that same Lord Jesus Christ lived out his ministry in the power of the Holy Spirit exactly the way he expects you and me to live our life. By the power of his spirit, through the truth of his word, fearing no danger because he is Jehovah Shammah with me. Jehovah Shammah means he's with you. He's with you when you sleep. He's with you when you wake. He's with you when you go to work. He's with you when you're in conflict in your house or with your neighbor or in the church. He is with us. He is the God who is Jehovah Shammah. He is everywhere in us and with us. Now, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come and leave and come and leave. But Jesus said, now, because of my glorification, my sacrifice, I'm going to send you another like myself, the Holy Spirit. He will be in you. He will be with you. He will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit who lives in you wants to teach you this book. He wants to speak to you every day out of this book. He wants to guide your steps and help you to have assurance that you're taking steps by his power, with his power, through the truth of his word, to bring honor to the one name, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's with you, Jehovah Shammah. His rod and his staff, they comfort you. What's the rod for? The shepherds always carried a rod in their little script bag. 
Why? Well, they would fight off the enemy. <laughs> they would rebuke those who would try to intrude. But if a sheep kept going astray, the shepherd would take his crook and hold it up underneath the leg of a sheep and take his rod and whack, break the leg. Then he would reach into his little bag and get his splints and put it on either side of that leg that he just broke and wrapped it. And then he would let the sheep get up and that sheep that kept running off and getting into the bushes and straying into this path and that path and into that poison stuff. Now he couldn't run away. And when he came to a stream, he was just creeping along. So the shepherd had to lift him over the stream, had to nurse him along until his leg got healed again. Jehovah Rapha, the great healer. Have you been disciplined like that by the Lord? I remember as a young believer in New Mexico where I grew up, I fell in love with an old car. And that old car began to mean more to me than Jesus. And I pulled that old car into the, year, into the yard one day. And when I pushed on the brake, it went all the way to the bottom. And now I'm headed toward my dad's barn. And my dad was not an easy man to cross. And I was terrified. And I did the only thing I knew to do was grab that old green Chevy's gear stick and shove it up into reverse. And it died right there. It never moved another inch. And I got out of it, cleaned up, and I walked a mile to church. And all the way to the church house that Wednesday night, the Lord said, Tom, that old car began to mean too much to you. And I love you, but this is my spanking for you. And Hebrews 12 says that he disciplines his children. And if you don't get any correction or discipline from the word and from the Holy Spirit, and when you come to the house of God, there's no conviction on your life. And when you're living out there and you're making compromises with your life and you can just buzz right on by that and it not bother you, you need to ask yourself, am I, am I really a sheep? Because God, is a better father than every father in this room. And he corrects his kids when they consistently step out of bounds and go astray and violate his truth and his word. He rebukes them. He chastens his children. He corrects them to the path. And the discipline is not always easy. When I was disciplined by that old car experience, the one joyful thing I got out of it was that it gave me assurance I really was his kid. That he will not let me get by with my rebellion, my disobedience, just like this good shepherd here in Psalm 23. Goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever. What a great God. All of those nine expressions of God, even in the protective hand of the Lord, he prepares a table of Jehovah Jireh in the very presence of the enemy. And the enemy is everywhere. The lying devil comes to kill, to steal, to destroy. But he anoints our head with oil, the Lord does, and our cup runs over. He gives us the abundant life. If you're not a sheep, you need to be born again so you can begin living and basking in the love of God. And as a sheep, you need to flourish 
and experience the abundance of walking with him by his spirit in his holy word and delighting in not only his presence in your own life and experiencing him in his word and with his people in the church, but sharing, sharing the truth with others because this news is too good to keep. So please remember last Sunday, the shepherd's cross, always visit the cross on a daily basis. What an awful sacrifice for our sin, Psalm 22. Always remember the crook. The Lord, your shepherd, wants to shepherd you personally through life, through his word, by the power of his spirit. And share what the Lord is doing in your life. Don't be ashamed to exalt Jesus, to lift up Jesus, to testify Jesus wherever you go. It's the greatest privilege on the face of the earth. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, reminding us of Jesus, our shepherd. In the New Testament, he's the good shepherd that laid his life down for us. That's the gospel of John. In the book of Hebrews, he is the great shepherd that sanctifies us to himself. In the book of 1 Peter, he is the chief shepherd who is our example in every way. And he is with us to strengthen us in trial. To cause us to have power to stand against all of the forces of evil. And through every suffering be purged, purified, and made to be more like him. Oh, Lord, help us to study your word, to know it, to live it by the power of your spirit and make a difference in our world, starting at the house where we live and taking it to the ends of the earth. I ask this in Jesus, the great shepherd, the chief shepherd, the good shepherd's holy name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And amen. Let's sing page 541 together. What will you do with Jesus? Shall we stand together?
neutral you cannot be. Someday your heart be asking, what will you do with me? <coughs> will you like Peter, your Lord, deny? Or will you scorn from his foe to fly, daring for Jesus to Jesus, you my heart today. Jesus, I'll follow you all the way. Gladly obey the will you say. This will I do with Jesus. What will you do with Jesus? Neutral you cannot be. Let's say the Lord's model prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. bless you and keep you. The Lord, who is your shepherd, draw near to you by the power of his spirit in fresh ways this week, like never before in your life. And may the blessing of the Lord that makes rich so rest on your life, your family, everything you touch, that everywhere you go, you are made eternally, everlastingly aware. The Lord is my shepherd. The little boy didn't know how to say it. He said, the Lord is my shepherd and he's all I want. The Lord is my shepherd. He's all I want in life. He's all I need in death. And he's all that anyone could ever imagine or hope for in the life to come. The Lord bless you with a passion to follow the shepherd in everything you do. And let this church flourish in that truth for Jesus' sake. Let's sing the doxology together. Thank you. 